keyboard player is here as part of the new session players in Logic Pro for iPad 2. So in this video, we're going to go through all of the different features so that you know exactly how to use it. Let's go. If you'd like to learn about the other session players like the drummer and the bass, as well as all the other new features here in Logic Pro for iPad 2, check out the other videos in the description. To add a keyboard player track, we're going to tap on the plus button here, go to session player, make sure that keyboard player is selected, and then tap to add a brand new keyboard player track. There are three different views here. You've got your standard view, automation, and chords, which we cover in another video you can find in the description as well. For this one, we're looking at all of the options here on the main, panel for the keyboard player. To preview your keyboard player sound, simply tap on the preview button and tap again to stop. Next up, you have presets. Tap on the presets and you can choose from any of the predefined presets. Let's listen to some big chords. Tap preview again. Sounds good. Let's jump down to the interface. Complexity tells the keyboard player how complex or simple to play the part. Everything from a very simple part to a very complex part. Intensity controls how intense the playing is. Everything from soft and gentle like this. to a more full-on performance like this. The Patterns Selector allows you to change the pattern of the instrument being played. So if we tap right here in the middle, we've got six different predetermined patterns. And as we tap through each one of these, you can see that the pattern changes there. Let's take a listen to this number four. In the patterns option here, you can also choose to follow the rhythm of the chords. If you have a chord track and we cover chord tracks in another video, you can check that one out in the description. You can also follow another track like your drummer track here, either as well of the chords or just the drummer track alone. Sometimes you've dialed in your pattern and all of your settings and it's close, but not quite right. That's where this button, the perform again option comes in handy. If we hit this, check it out. It changes the performance each time so that we can get a slightly different style using all of those same settings. Okay, it's time to talk about hands because unlike other instruments, we need to define how the left hand and the right hand are going to work here in the keyboard player. So to turn on or off either hand, we simply tap and that will turn off the left hand, tap again to turn it back on, tap the right hand and tap again. You can see it changes. So if you want just the left hand playing some bass, we can leave the left hand on like this. Or if we just want the treble section with the right hand, we can turn just the right hand on like this. You can control the position of where the hands are using these sliders. So if we want to play the bass notes really low down, we can slide our left hand low down and we get something like this. Or let's say we want to bring the right hand right up to the top, we can do this. And of course, we can drag the left hand higher and position these so that you can get any range you like. If you just want sort of this mid-range, you can do that too. So you get really good control over what your keyboard player is going to do. Let's look at left hand options. First, we have voicing. So we can play the root only, the root and the octave, the root and the fifth, and the root, the fifth, and the octave. So the root is generally going to play just one note, and then we can add additional notes, either the octave, the fifth, or the fifth and octave. Let's choose the fifth and the octave to get a more complex bottom hand. And you can see there that it plays root, fifth, and then top octave. Next is the style. We can choose from sustain only, simple, moderate, complex, follow the right hand, and steady eighth notes. So there's a heap of options in here that you can experiment and play with. Let's check out the complex option here and see what we get. And one that I really like is sustain only, where we just play those block chords as a sustain under our right hand like this. Mm -hmm. 
Speaking of the right hand, yes, we have right hand options. First, we have voicing that can go everywhere from two voice up to four voice, and you can use different inversions and different chords. If it doesn't mean much to you, don't stress out. Just experiment and play around with these. Let's, for instance, check out this full chord with a fixed inversion. And we have movement here for the right hand. So we can either have a minimal range, a small range, medium range, or large range. And I think you know what I'm going to select here just to see what we've got here. Let's take a listen. I really like that. To the right, we have fills. So fills mean varying from the standard part that the keyboard player is playing. So at the moment, we have very few fills. If we turn this up, suddenly we get additional fills and the part becomes a little more fancy. And to adjust the complexity of our fills, we can dial this one in everything from very simple fills to, uh, yeah, super fancy. And finally, on the right-hand side, we have swing. So we can change from a 16th to an 8th note swing and dial in the amount of swing. You usually want this to match your drums and your bass if you've got those in your track, but you can get a really swinging piano sound if you dial this one up. But wait, there's more. As well as our main tab, we have the details tab, which gives us some additional options. Let's take a look at those. First, we have grace notes. Now, these are those little ding kind of notes that you hear. The best way to hear these is to turn this up to 100% and take a listen. So you get more of those trills and little lead-in notes in your playing. Next, we have the feel. This we can turn into either pull or push. And what this means is pull is where it's kind of sitting just behind the rest of the track, such as this. Or if we turn it the other way, it's going to push. It's going to be just in front of the rest of the instruments here in our track. Now, you normally wouldn't turn it that much up or down, but it can help if you just need to get your keyboard player a little more in the pocket. Dynamics controls the loud and soft parts of your performance. So if you want lots of dynamics, you can dial this up. And if you want it to be more of a steady kind of sound, you can dial it down. Next is tempo. At the moment, it is set to standard. If we tap on that one, we can make it half time, double time, or automatic. So if you want a little half time break, you can tap on that one and we get something like this. And finally, the humanize. And this is exactly what it sounds like. If your performance is sounding too perfect and you want to add a little bit of a human element, you can dial that one up. Let's uh, dial it up and take a listen. So you just get some lack of perfection in some of the timing, which can really make it sound like a human's performing. The last tab we have here is the manual view, and this is where we can actually tap in a manual pattern for our piano to use. So if we wanted to get a very distinct custom pattern for our piano to play along with, we could add it here and then play it back. We can change the length of the pattern by tapping up the top here and going anywhere from one bar up to four bars. And we have settings in the top right corner. If we tap this one, we can copy and paste between different sections and we can also reset to go back to scratch. Up in the top right, we have some handy additional options here. If we tap on this one, this is our lock settings. We can lock the fills, the swing, and our settings in here so that when we adjust other parts, it's not going to change them. If you've got the swing and the fills just right, this can be a handy option. And next to it, the three dots here. With this one, we can load the default patch if we've changed the patch we use, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And we can also recall the default. So if you've made a bunch of changes and you're not quite happy with it, you can hit that one and everything goes back to its default settings. We also have the default chord progression for new regions, which we cover when we talk all things chords in another video you can find in the description. Now I've buried the lead a little bit because we can of course change the player. We've got different styles 
styles we can choose from. If we tap right here on the piano, we've got freely, broken chords, block chords, arpeggiated, and a simple pad, which we can use. Let's change this one up to the simple pad, and you'll see that it changes everything, including the patch, which is the instrument that we're using here. Let's take a listen. Very cool. To change the instrument patch being used by the keyboard player, we need to tap on the browser icon in the bottom left corner. You can see that the classic analog pad is the current one that's selected and being used. To use a different instrument, all we need to do is tap, hold, and drag, and drop it over here onto the session player track. And you can see it's changed up, and now it sounds like this. The other way to change this is to use this, the replace mode, and with replace mode selected, if we tap on any of these, it automatically changes it. Let's change our session player and try the broken chords. That one sounds like this. And the cool thing is that we can use any keyboard patch we like with the keyboard player. So if instead of a piano, we wanted say an organ, we can come in here to our instrument patches, let's search for organ and bring in the classic rock organ by tapping that one. And there you go, we've now got an organ sound. Is it gonna work with these settings? Let's take a listen. Not quite, but here's the thing. We can now adjust it by choosing a different preset or in the case of an organ, we may actually want to bring the hands up and get something like this. Pretty cool. And when changing your keyboard player, if we tap on this one, if you want to change to the default patch of that keyboard player, make sure this is selected. If we wanted to say keep this organ sound, but change to the freely option, we can turn that off, tap on freely, and now we have all of these new settings, but with the organ sound. One thing to keep in mind with keyboard player is that this controls the player, the actual instrument is in the plugin. So if we tap the plugins button down the bottom here, you'll see that the studio piano is the plugin used for most of these. If we double tap on that one, it'll open up our studio piano and we can start changing all of the settings here in our piano sound. So keep in mind, if you wanna change the actual piano being used, jump into the plugin. And if you want to change the player and tell them to play something different, that's what we do here in the session player. There you have it, the keyboard player here in Logic Pro for iPad. So many cool options to play with. If you'd like to learn more about using all the new features here in Logic Pro for iPad 2, check out the other videos down in the description and I'll see you next time.